let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. So here's the difference between faith and reason. For faith, for God, all things are possible. For reason, that is to say, for the night of infinite resignation, that's not the case. And so the night of infinite resignation gives up the dearest for something higher, but without any hope, uh, in, in total despair, because there is no God on the scene who could bring Isaac back, even if that required a resurrection. In other words, the night of infinite resignation operates in a metaphysical framework of what today we would call scientific naturalism, a world in which there is no God who is an agent, uh, a world in which there is no God who performs what are commonly called miracles. Um, from, the, from the point of view of scientific naturalism, Abraham's faith is foolishness, it's absurd. And Kierkegaard says it's by virtue of the absurd that Abraham believes that he'll get Isaac back even if that requires a miracle. Um, from the standpoint of faith, the reason that ends up in despair um, is, is too narrow a view of reality. It leaves out what's most important about the real, namely God, as a loving agent. Um, and so you get this relativity of uh, reason, uh, depending on uh, the standpoint from which you uh, look at it. Now, <clears throat> Kierkegaard designates this distinction as preliminary. Uh, Fear and Trembling is a strange book. It has four introductions. And, and this comes in the fourth of the four introductions and is explicitly labeled preliminary. In other words, the contrast that I've just tried to describe uh, is um, not what is at the heart of the book. What's at the heart of the book uh, comes in the three problems that come after the four introductions. And the first of those is famously or infamously labeled, is there a teleological suspension of the ethical? So what on earth is that all about? Here the contrast is between Abraham and the tragic hero, rather than the night of infinite resignation. And the tragic hero is Agamemnon, or Jephthah, or Brutus. Uh, three stories from um, three different uh, literary contexts. And in each of those cases, um, Agamemnon and Jephthah and Brutus did kill their child a daughter in the case of Agamemnon. Uh, um, is it a daughter or a son in the case of Jephthah? I think it's a daughter, yeah. Uh, and a son in the case of Brutus. And what they have in common um, is that they live in a culture in which family values are very important. But the values of the larger community trump family values. And so in each of those three stories in different ways, um, uh, the needs of the community and the values of the community uh, point to a higher duty than the duty as a father to a son or a daughter. Um, and from Kierkegaard's point of view, that means they operate within the framework of the ethical. I'll spell that out more in just a moment. Whereas Abraham doesn't have anything of that sort. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac is based on no social ethos, no society's need. Um, it comes to him and his culture and his society from outside, from a transcendent God.